brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Ah, ladies and gents, welcome to another sud segment where good beer meets really bad radio. Again, I'm not going to talk during the intro. And I didn't think that I'd ever say the word toe fungus on on radio. Oh my God, he just said it. Okay. Um, I'm your hostess, good old gal Juliana, and with me today are, is, good old boy Dave. I is, are here. Thank you. Cool. Much. Reverend Pirate Very. Mark. <laughs> I'm here with you live from the WWE. <laughs> what was your, what was your, going to be your stage name? For Sophocles. Uh, you know what? Heraclitus. Heraclitus. That's it. Yeah. Harry. It means dirty toe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old boy, Mike. Yep, I'm definitely here. I'm still working on my WWE, you know, stage name. I really can't think, you know, exactly how well I could wield, you know, an empty uh, aluminum chair effectively. I need to really think about this. Hey, it's a lot easier to swing an empty one than a. One with somebody I, in I'm it. sure you guys will think of one for me, you know, before this episode's out. <laughs> and go to boy Kendall. I'm just here for the metal. <laughs> uh, of course. You are. And you've been tuning up your metal voice, so I like that. Working on it. Very cool. Um, for those of you that don't know, Good Old Boy Kendall has a blog called Beer Make Three, and he will discuss that later on the episode. Okay, today we're going to get dark. We're going to get really dark. And I don't mean stouts or porters, okay? Um, and this isn't an ode to Lemmy, although it could be an ode to Everything Lemmy. Everything should be an ode to Lemmy. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, we're doing a brewery takeover of True Brewing Company in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for any of you who want to Google these guys, uh, make sure you spell it T R V E when you're spelling true, because everyone knows you can't be a badass if your U's don't look like V's. True was created or opened by Head Brewer and Head Banger. You guys see what I did there? Yes, head Brewer, I did. Head Banger. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. Yep. Almost creative writing. Shut up. Uh, Nick Nuns. Now, I don't know if his name is actually pronounced Nuns, but a guy who makes beer and likes heavy metal, his last name should be Nuns. Uh, in 2012, and the, uh, and the place reflects his, uh, taste in music and art and beer. While the first two may lean towards heavy and aggressive, the beer is well conceived, balanced, and for the most part, very true to style. They now have a 10-barrel production facility called the Acid Temple that will allow them to increase production and expand their mines and their barrel program. See there, Acid. Expand your mind. Get it? Uh, yeah. Sounds like my neighborhood back in the 70s. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot more weed involved back then. <laughs> so we actually uh, visited uh, True during our last trip to the GABF. Very interesting evening. So i got to tell you a little bit about... You know, we went to several places that evening. We actually were over at Black Project, you know, before we went over to... After we drank all day at GDF. Yeah, pretty much, after we had drank. So this was a little later in the day. And um, I don't know that we were fully prepared, you know, for the really change in uh, venue. Pretty much. Yeah, I was just waiting, you know, for, um, you know, for them to come out and, and introduce the band that was blaring in the background. It was... Uh, you know, it was a very large community table, um, you know, where uh, most, of, most of the seating was, you know, available uh, there in that brew pub. 
Um, I think the thing that struck me was uh, the size of their brewing facility uh, was so uh, small. It's I mean, very compact. Yeah. I, I was really shocked that um, a lot of the beer that we were having, you know, would even come out of that facility. And I knew that they had a new production facility that they had been working on. Um, but I don't think any of the beer that we had that evening came out of there. I think it, I think that all that was straight out of the, the back yeah. of the place. So I remember a lot of our impressions, you know, really coming out of that uh a lot of the experience out of the brew pub was how much all of the beer just had such a one note characteristic to it. It was like mm-hmm. somebody uh, almost having like 20 shades of, of, you know, um, orange, gray? you know, oh. not gray, but just of a color, you know, kind of in front of you. And the beers just really didn't have a, a tremendous amount of distinctive characteristic, you know, from one beer to the next. And I really thought that it was, it just happened to be an experience that we had in the, in the brew pub, you know, that evening. Um, and I thought, well, you know, maybe some of the bottle beer, you know, will be, you know, vastly different than some of this. So um, I look forward to some of our discussion and seeing how some of the bottle beer has some variation from, you know, some of what we had, you know, in the brew pub that evening. Kendall, how would you uh, how would you like the true uh, the, the tap room? Well, I, I didn't get the experience that you guys had because I was at the late session for GABF when you guys mm-hmm. took off. So I had to catch a cab down there. If you don't remember, I, I showed oh, up yeah. right, you guys there, like, right, right, right yeah, before right you left. Moving. So yeah. I think I walked in. It was very dark, very loud, and uh, I tasted several of the beers, and I think I was there all of five minutes before we left. But, uh, yeah, the, the beers that, that you guys gave me, I think what Mike said was true. They, they have very similar uh, flavors and characteristics among them. <laughs> <laughs> Trying for the first time. River, Mar- River Mars banging. <laughs> River Mars banging his head on the microphone. So I'm drinking by Braille here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I'll tell you the first impression I got of True was uh, the uh, the smell of cannabis <laughs> that hits you uh, about ten feet from the front door on the outside. So you you don't even get into the place. But not that I'm complaining liked it this was colorado <laughs> yeah people. and uh and it, it was um you know i i really liked it i i thought it was i thought the artwork on the walls was pretty cool it was very dark and um oh was that artwork <clears throat> hey you know what <laughs> it's in the eye of the beholder man and uh you know that that goat they sacrificed in the back <laughs> i you know that goat had it coming uh, but other than that, I, I don't know. I, I thought the beers were 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 good. I, I do think they were probably uh, a little, uh, you know, not not uh, all stellar. But I think part of what they're doing is they're they're still finding their their way a little bit, and they're There's brewing beers a, they like. They're you know? a huge hype factor, you know, that's yeah. setting in. And so, I think what's going to be interesting uh, is. Uh, there is a tremendous, you know, following, you know, that they have, you know, in that particular geography you yeah. know, for what they're doing. And it'll be interesting how we kind of balance, you know, that hype with actually what's in the glass, you yeah. know, um, here today. Because I really felt like there was a cultural, you know, mystique that was kind of almost creeping into, you know, the quality of the beer. Sure. And, um you know, be interesting now that you've kind of moved away from that and you're just looking at what's in the glass, you know, to talk about today. Yeah. I think part of what their, their mission is, is to turn metalheads into beer nerds. So we'll <laughs> that, see how that, that would be Yeah, That would be right yeah. on target for sure. Yeah. So I wasn't there, but when they, when they serve you, do they say uh bong appetite? No. With yeah, the pinky no, no. up. Yeah. <laughs> right. but I, I do think I recognize the, uh, the guy behind the bar. Uh, who was that? Who <laughs> was it? Be <laughs> no, I think it was his cousin, <laughs> Steve. Steven. I thought it was a it was a cool place, though. I liked it. Yeah, you know, yeah, I could All see right. Lemmy hanging out there. I, I think the taco stand out front was a little out of place, though. You know, that was the only thing. It was a little odd. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Well, I, you know, but smoking enough weed and drinking enough beer, you got to have some tacos, buddy. Well, and like Iron Maiden's biggest fans are all like south of the border, so sure, why not? I guess 
Maybe. Sort of. Sort of. Okay. okay. Maybe Iron Maiden is in total metal. Sorry. No offense to Pantera fans. Okay. Um, well, we had a great time at the tap room, right? And was very excited that we were able to find some bottles that we were able to bring back with us. And yeah, it was great to have all that, right? Mm. Okay. Um, Dave, <laughs> why don't you give us a lineup for today? You're really selling it there, honey. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's today's lineup. Uh, Life's Trade, Current Mouth, uh, Ostara, uh, cursed. All right, and uh, Mike says, Mike says this is Humavadi, uh, and Epiclesis, and Buried Sun. Right. Those are your true beers today. Wow, I would have lost that bet. Uh, what was the bet? That Dave was going to hose up the names of those beers for the sure. Humanadi. Oh. Yes. Well, I think he did pretty good. He did uh-huh. pretty good. Okay. Um, we'll go to boy Kendall. Think you can tell us the suds ratings quick? Well, I can get started, but let's do this in my best metal voice. Okay. We'll be discussing and rating these beers with these suds ratings, plus our signature belching sounds. Here are those ratings now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be a terrible metal singer. <laughs> oh, I thought it was pretty good. Oh, yeah. That was pretty good, yeah. yeah. Better than Mike's pirate. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> we'll get to that when we get back. Yeah, we'll take a brief break. A message from the American Podcast Council. You and I know why podcasting is so wonderful, but in a recent survey, 45% of Americans indicated they're unaware of the term podcasting. Think about it. 45%. People just like you, living unaware. It's as if the term podcasting was just a word, like folk and blurble, or mocking turf. Schleen. People in your community need help. All this month, we want you to find a friend, a relative, a curious stranger. Show them how to try podcasts. Then share your story on something called Twitter with the hashtag TryPod. That's T-R-Y pod. Together, we can delete podcast unawareness. Won't you help? That's T-R-Y pod. Welcome back, metalheads. You had to cut it off so short. Oh, wow, that was quick. That was quick. I didn't know if you could talk over it. Okay. Um, Welcome back, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) We are doing a brewery takeover. And today's brewery of choice is true from Denver, Colorado. Yeah, so, I know, I know. Why are you looking at me? I, I just didn't know if you were going to play any more music. Uh, I think this is a whole secret side of Kindle's personality. I know. I don't think it was that big of a secret. I listened to a lot of metal when I was a kid. Okay, so, uh, okay. Wrath God Kendall here. Uh, give us the Suds ratings. Okay, number one, that sucks. Give me anything but a bud. Whoa. I can't do the whole thing. You're not like going to use your metal voice? Wow. Number two, was that a belt? There you go, see? <laughs> number three, ah, what a relief. Number four, a body should really not make that sound. That's very true. Number five. Listen to that hang time. Give me another. Awesome. <laughs> I'm throwing gang signs over here for some reason. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, what is that? <laughs> Sadly, we are like the most unmetal group of people. Is, yeah, this is the most unmetal crew you're probably going to run into. 
All right. Up the irons. Let's get this started. Mm. Good old boy, Dave. What? What are your top picks of the day? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing that? Okay. Mm-hmm. Didn't realize we were working today. Mm. Why start now? Yeah, as he's thinking about it, let's vamp. <laughs> See the creative juices flowing. Yeah, well, they were, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, those crickets were working overtime. <laughs> All right, uh, the first beer I would like to talk about is Current Mouth. Uh, it is a mixed culture golden ale aged on black currants, and that you put in your mouth, and that's why it's called Current Mouth. Um. That's like a slow clap. That's what I like. <laughs> it's like everybody in the back. What's what's the sound of no hands clapping? There you go. <laughs> um, I um, I don't have a lot to say about this beer. I like currants. I like uh, I like how the um, the slight funkiness and uh, the acidity is acidity is not over the top. Uh, I gave this beer a four. Uh, uh, uh. Is this still me? No. Yep, yep, it's All still right. you, man. Uh, my second one is uh, Ostara, which is a golden sour ale with dandelion, lemon peel, and lemongrass. Ostara is one of eight neo pagan sabbats or holidays. That make up the wheel of the year, along with Ostara, many Wiccans and Neo Pagans observe Beltane, Litha, or Summer Solstice, L- uh, Luggen Schmeschmer, <laughs> the Autumnal Equinox, Samhain, Yule, and Emboik. Mm hmm. We're not trying to Boy. insult your religion or offend you. We just we just can't read your friggin' read. words. We just don't know how to say these words. Yeah, I've heard of Sam Hain though. That's a Danzig. <laughs> that's a Danzig album. Sam Hain. Yep, I knew that. See, that's something I know. Danzig. The you know, list. you know, Glenn Danzig. It's a short list. You know, Glenn Danzig and Reverend Mark have something in common. Oh yeah. Uh, what? Uh, you're both. You both know Johnny Cash or knew oh. Johnny Cash. Oh. Yeah, so there's a little trivia for you guys. Wow. And I named the file for the completely useless information <laughs> hey, alone exponentially. Hey, I name dropped Johnny Cash, okay? I'm trying to get us. I never more thought fans. you would get the word Johnny Cash mixed into this episode. I got some words for you. Uh-huh. I'll mix in. <laughs> okay, uh what were we, were we talking about? Ostar. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Dandelion, lemon peel, and lemongrass. I definitely get the dandelion. Um, it tastes like. Uh, I'm just lying about that. I, I don't know what dandelion tastes like. But I do taste the lemon stuff. So uh, it's pretty good. Citrusy. Okay, I'm going to give that one a three. I feel like I'm bombing here, Julie. Am I bombing? Oh, well, she's not. Looking. Crickets. <laughs> Okay. And your third pick. <laughs> the Humanati. Humavati. Humavati? Humavati. Mixed culture smoked ale. And I'll tell you why I picked this one for my top three. Smoked beers are hard to make. Well, they're not hard to make, but they're hard to make where someone doesn't add too much smoke. And I feel like this one, the smoke was very balanced for what the beer was. And I thought it was a uh, very pleasant to drink. The smoke was not overpowering. Um, Humavati is a Hindu goddess, uh, and, uh, is called, uh, literally translates to the, the smoky sm- one. Yeah. Mm. Humavati. Mm. See, you learn stuff on mm-hmm. this show. Yeah. Um, I haven't learned a damn thing on this show, <laughs> but anyways, uh, I gave Humavati a four. Uh, uh, four. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's going to get ripped apart coming up. All right. That's all I got. Good. Was that enough? That was perfect. Have I worked hard enough for you today? That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks.
Thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> You tell I was All right. very prepared for this episode. Mm. Reverend Mark, God of all that is metally good. Oh. I tried. Well, I, I yeah. tried. <clears throat> I did cut my teeth on Black Sabbath, but yes. you'd say even Led Zeppelin. You know, mm. I mean, if you really... I won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> what I will say, that I do work a lot in interfaith relations, and I think True is definitely, uh, on the palette at least, uh, you know, a challenge in that regard <laughs> of blending all of these various uh, religious and spiritual and pagan influences into something that one can articulate it's clearly to the public. <laughs> So my, I, I have a top three, but I'll start with my top two because they're kind of binaries. They go together. Uh, so uh, my first is cursed. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, you gotta be one in sin before you can be one in love. So we're all cursed. <sighs> Amen, all brother. Cursed. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I think it was one of my. It has been up, up until this minute, unless I get something else uh, poured into a glass here. Uh, it really is a. a a good mixed fermentation beer uh, beverage. I'm more leaning in that direction towards when I'm when I'm wanting to get something that's sour or or semi tart to go with uh, a mixed fermentation experiment. So I like this a lot. I was particularly amazed at the how clean it finishes. Mm. So uh, I'm going to give Cursed uh, a four. <laughs> But nonetheless, if you are cursed, then you then it leads you to my next uh, top choice, which is uh, Epiclesis. And I believe that Epiclesis could indeed be poured into a chalice on Sunday. Um, <laughs> and that I think it would... I'll go to that church. Most undoubtedly, it would uh, impart a mixed blessing to all congregants. But I think one worth hanging around to the end of the service for. Um I just I found it to be uh, provocative, in invocative in that it is one that uh, it is a a beer apparently that is used to invoke the Holy Spirit into the Eucharistic bread. Uh, I will not speculate on that because I was not drinking it as a celebrant today. But nonetheless, <laughs> <laughs> though he was uh, celebrating beer, yeah. yeah so. Uh, so we there we have we have the hurt the the cursed and the epiclesis together, and then I'll finish off and I'll give that one a four if I didn't already say that. <laughs> and then the third one uh, that I have chosen is uh, <clears throat> the humavati. Yeah. Yes, and I have to say though that uh, I'm a little reticent about you know this altogether because. I liked it as a smoked beer, but I personally cannot judge a smoked beer unless I'm pairing it with some food. And so I really think that this particular smoked beer, though, would be particularly good with some sort of smoked fish, mm. uh, you know, like a smoked salmon dish mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, so like that so yeah. that's why I'm giving it my third rating because I think, and I'm only imagining, but I think I'm right, that this would be so amazing to pair it with some smoked salmon. So I'm giving it a rating of three. Humavadi. Humavadi. Very good. Um, good old boy, Mike. I am not going to use my metal voice today. So, um, current mouth, current mouth. I'm going to talk about current mouth. <laughs> uh, so, um, it's not bad. Yeah, thank you. Mm, you it's know. not good either. Yeah, <laughs> well, it was a matinee next Tuesday. He's no Mount Hood. Uh, so, uh, Dave talked a little bit about this. This is a mixed uh, culture, gold nail, aged on black currants. Um, my tasting notes here on Current Mouth, I wrote down it's a strong, tart aroma. Um, this is actually probably one of the better made beers. I thought this was something that finished out really well. Um, so, you know, a lot of these other beers, it just doesn't seem like they finished out really well or the yeast was kind of... Um, I don't know. It just wasn't quite done. Um, this really, uh, had, uh, unfortunately the, the current just, um, kind of stole everything away and the, the beer itself kind of lacked some depth. Um, I'm not a huge fan of things laced with cherries or currants. Um, 
you know, in general. Uh, or but, raspberries. Or raspberries, you know. But actually, I thought this was one of the better beers of the flight. Um, my sedge rating for current mouth is going to be a four. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, the other beer we've talked about it a little bit already, which is the Humavati. Is, so this is the mixed culture smoke ales, how they've declared this. The thing I wrote around the Humavati was uh, smoked with a giant question mark. Um, this is probably one of the you know lightest elements of smoke that I've ever had off a you know declared smoke beer. And Dave's right. Um, I mean, the vast majority of the smoke beers that we have are overdone, and the smoke just completely obliterates everything else you know that's on it a lot of head nodding you know around the table here um you know i thought that actually this reminded me closer to something that was a mixed fermentation uh beer uh we had one that was in the mixed here and actually i thought this was probably more indicative of you know what you typically um get off a of mixed fermentation very pleasing sour you know characteristic around this there wasn't really kind of just one thing going on it seemed like there were six or seven uh, things that were kind of going on. So I really thought this beer was headed in the right direction. Um, and I would give the Humavati a solid three. Uh, the last beer, uh, I'm always uh, hesitant to talk about three, but since we've covered these two, is Cursed. Um, Reverend Mark talked a little bit about it, and Kendall and I were kind of tasting this together, and I really <laughs> uh, enjoyed our mutual reaction off this. Um this was uh, one of the few beers that actually had Brett in it, um, as well as a blend of uh, Saccharomyces Brett, uh, Brett and Lactobacillus, as well as uh, Wild yeast. So an awful lot going on and try to tame, you know, going into something like this. Um, reading the description and knowing some of the other beers, I was like, hmm, this is either going to work well or it's not going to at all. Um, my tasting notes uh, have very heavy citrus aroma coming off this. It was a lemon bomb, and that was the thing that uh, Kendall and I were kind of looking at each other, and uh, I really, uh, uh, Kendall did a great job. It was uh, off of a candy, actually. Yeah, I thought it tasted like a lemon head candy, so if mm. you're familiar with those, that's all I was getting off of it. Totally, yeah, that's it all the way. I really thought that the bread um, itself was kind of lifting this beer uh, and actually making it uh, quite enjoyable. So my such rating for Cursed is going to be a three. <laughs> Very good. Go to Black Kendall. What do you think? <laughs> it's time to rock. <clears throat> okay, I, I'm excited. I, I'm going to talk about two beers that have not been mentioned in the top three, uh, from, or for my top three. So my first was Buried Sun, and the description was an amber-hued, malt-forward, French-style farmhouse. So when I hear that, first thing I'm thinking is beer to guard. And I did get some of those caramelly malt notes, some of that malt richness, more so than any of the other beers that we tried. It was very effervescent, had a light tartness to it, and um, had some nice fermentation character with a little peppery spice and a little just that classic Belgian French farmhouse style fruitiness. Um, I enjoyed the beer. It was my number one, and I gave it a four. <laughs> My number two beer was one that hasn't been mentioned yet, and um, it was very uh, what I would call like a session sour or a session light uh, kind of beer. It's called Life's Trade, it was, and it's a small beer at 4.7%, and they the description is, with this beer, we pay homage to the tradition of classically styled grain bill and by fermenting and punch-ins. So uh, didn't really get the punch-in part of it. That it was a you know kind of barrel aged in a big big barrel, but uh, I like the beer because I got a nice little funkiness out of it. Those classic barn house aromas. It was very bright, very citrusy, a lot of lemon, but not as much as the cursed. It was more of kind of a classic uh, tart lemon, and uh, just crisp, light on a hot summer day. This would be a poundable beer, even though it has that tartness to it. I think it would be very crisp and refreshing. So the life's trade was a good one for me. That's a four. I don't know uh, how they would pull that uh, off um, in that facility to, uh, you know, to fill any, you know, barrels at all. I mean, they would have to, you know, drop it in, uh, you know, some portable containers and take it into another facility. I mean, there's Didn't just they have no barrels way. like along the wall or something. There were I don't remember any. It seems like there were barrels. But those punchins are big barrels. Really so. huge. <clears throat> I don't remember seeing anything that big. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't even know how you would get it into the room, let alone, you know, after it's filled, get it out of there. So, um, you had to get some help. Yeah, that's one. Could it be? 
Right, correct. <laughs> yeah, so I'm thinking this is something they've done. Uh, at least they have a off-site barrel facility at the very least. I think so. The Acid Temple. So my third beer was <laughs> is one that's already been mentioned that Reverend Mark enjoyed, the Epiclesis. Um, the description on this said rosemary and lime peel, but I got absolutely no rosemary mm, out of mm, it. But mm. I do get those little lime uh, in, in um, kind of a little hint of citrus. But I also was getting raspberry on this one. There's no mention of yeah. raspberry in the beer. And but that tastes a little strawberry as well. Yeah, I, and I, I could see that. I got so, some gooseberry. Some Boone's Farm, you know. Uh, <laughs> Just throw out a name of a, a couple more berries, Dave. Elderberry? <laughs> <laughs> Your father smells of elderberry. <laughs> Did you get any dingleberry? <laughs> wow. Ooh. But uh, the Epiclesis was a nice beer. Uh, I enjoyed it. For me, it was a three. Mm. Yeah. Hi, it's me. Yay. Despite my demonic urges, I popped a butter rum lifesaver and sucked away like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that guy would not fit in into the, in that facility for sure. <clears throat> wow. Huh. Um. Well, before I get started on my beers, I just wanted to talk about the names of these beers that we are having today. I'm not really quite sure why there is such the panache of combining, you know, their uh, predilection towards uh, all the Greek mythology and you know the dark side. Good Hindu, you got mm-hmm. some, you know, stuff in it. Yeah, they just know their their immediate demographic of I customer. Just, yeah, yeah I, I guess I don't know. I, I just have this thing playing through my head of some guy, you know, coming up in Georgia, going, "I'll have some of that Humavardi," <laughs> you know. It's just, it just, I don't know. That, that guy gonna... would get beaten up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. that, that would totally happen. Yeah. Well, I think uh, you know, if you look at uh, heavy metal bands <laughs> and heavy metal albums, it's kind of the same deal. So, uh, like, like I said, that Danzig album, Sam Hain. So, I, th- I think it all kind of goes along. Up next, after this break, will be me. But baby, the whole elation Riding down this lover's avenue As slow as a willow blows Or as fast as the whirlwind grows We glide beneath the stars in cobalt blue To the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever, sweet love Our eyes ahead on these back roads with a view Hi everyone, welcome back. We are discussing I like how all of our heads are bobbing. You know, it's like <laughs> I never would have thought that I would have seen this crew with their heads bobbing, you know, to uh, a metal song. I like how that guy sounded like he was he was like really awesome and then he sounded like he was having an asthma attack at the same time. <laughs> 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 Wow. Maybe okay. that was just me. Yeah, that might have been. Well, there's just two diehard you. musicians here at the table. Have you ever tried to reach uh, sheet music for a heavy metal? It's difficult. Yeah. 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 And uh, it's lyrically challenging oh. as well as musically Especially the trombone parts. It's like whopping three chords <laughs> in every metal song. You know, that's about it. Yeah. And you like how they just say scream, scream, yeah, right, scream. Right. right yeah. <laughs> you know, so. How rude. What? Mm-hmm. What? But those chords are badass. I'm like, yeah, whip out your violin. Let's hear some heavy metal. <laughs> hey, you know what? Don't knock the Black Sabbath till you hear it on violin. Uh, okay? Saying. I'm just saying. Play that some, old violin with Juliana. I like some, this. Uh, Paganini. Yes. I would like to hear some Sabbath on the violin. I mean, yeah. seriously. It's like apocalypse. <laughs> apocalypse. Yeah. Crap. Apocalyptic? It's not crap. No, 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 no. I'm thinking of that band. Apocalyptica. Apocalyptica. Yes. Apocalypso? 
Mm. No, 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 no. They're and these cello. Exhale. Okay, stop. <laughs> Is that a Christian heavy metal band? No, no, oh. no, no, no. no. <laughs> But these are classically trained cello players from. Oh, I saw those guys. The They're Netherlands really and. Oh, Netherlands. That sounds like a YouTube video that I've yet to watch. No, but they do metal versions of songs. Like it's it's. They really do cello cool. versions of metal songs. Mm. It's pretty cool. Sounds like the guy that uh, does the uh, uh, bagpipe, you know, and he does all those. He did the ACDC Thunderstruck. There's you a know, guy that, that does that on, on banjo too. Yeah. You know, that was actually pretty good. I enjoyed yeah. him. I thought he was funny. Okay. Till he right. passed out. Yeah. Okay. He blew I'm his done. pipes. Okay. A too stop. Hard. Stop. Oh, sorry, what? Oh. <laughs> I want to talk about my beard. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Back to beard. I want to see this cheap music for that particular clip. So that's what I mean. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay. I gotta have more cowbell. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course. Guess what? Thank you. I need more metal cowbell. I, yeah, metal cowbell. If oh, that exists. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, my first bureau of choice is Humavati. Um, Humavati. We've talked about it. Mixed culture, smoked ale. What I really enjoyed about this beer is the balance of smoke on this. I mean... And that is saying a lot because there's so many breweries that overdo it. We know it. We've been there. We've tasted it. And we've said, what the heck? This not. I mean, and it's got a great color, too, for this beer, too, if that makes any sense. Um, Just with smoked beers being so hard to make, I really, really enjoyed this one. And um, I give this one a four. Yeah, really, really. Yeah, I could see this with a wood-fired Hawaiian pizza. Sure. Oh, my God, with the ham? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, and the pineapple against mm. this smoke? Yep. Yep. Yes. And the spam? Yeah. Okay, no. No spam. No spam? Spam? Oh, I already know where this episode's going. <laughs> <laughs> Bring in the Vikings. Uh, Yeah. Okay. The next one that I wanted to talk about, which Reverend Mark talked about um, right from the beginning, was Epiclesis. I, this one is like my favorite of the whole thing. Um, first of all, the amber, the amber ale. So it's got these like caramel characteristics. And then the rosemary. Okay. I used to know a guy. Well, I do know a guy that tried to wine and dine me with a rosemary beer one night. That he made himself and um did not go well. <laughs> <laughs> uh no. No. He was not <laughs> Well yeah. everyone, that's all for today's episode. <laughs> you actually chose a rosemary beer to for a date beer? Uh I don't know. I was drunk. <laughs> I was about to say, I want to hear the dis- lack of decision making process that went down here. Uh, yeah. She okay. still said yes. I can't <laughs> believe that. So apparently it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. I mean, like, talk about, like, wanting to use it as a marinade with your turkey. But anyway. Actually, wow. mar- <laughs> no, you could marinate pork chops in that beer, and it was awesome. So. It's about the only thing you can do besides dump it. Wow. <laughs> 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 you know, if I had a... If I had a button, <laughs> what would be the sun's rating on that? Okay. Hmm. No, but. I want to hear the post production conversation of this episode. <laughs> okay. But what I really, really liked about this beer was the, the subtleness of the rosemary. But I definitely got it. And then the, the blend with the, with the lime peel. I really wasn't expecting um, rosemary and lime together, but I really enjoyed this. And. Although I couldn't see it in a chalice, no offense, um, I really do I- enjoy the balance of all of this stuff. And, um, you know, so the sweetness of the caramel malts with the rosemary and the lime peel. Sorry to bore you there, buddy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, I just kind of tuned out after you started ripping on my rosemary beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> anyways, um, I gave this a four. Wow. I'm sorry, I did. 
So I have to chime in with my tasting notes oh, on this. Yeah. So, uh, so for Epiclesis, I wrote down a muddled mess. It has a grape-like sourness, you know, around this. Um, and I just, I thought it lacked a lot of body. Um, actually, my sedge rating was a two on this. So um, I, you guys must be tasting something I'm just not picking up here on this today. So Okay. You're, ta- you- you're still... You're ill, Mike. Oh, I am. Sick. That's true. You're very, I'm, very I'm sick. on enough medication where you could declare me a natural hazard. Mm. You, know, so. you need still... lips of faith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's a different episode. Uh, you know the yeah. fact that uh, you know Reverend Mark, you know, put this in a short list today. I thought that was uh, kind of interesting. Um, okay, and my last, my last is um, is current mouth. I really, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, first of all, luscious color, luscious, luscious color, and the the current was was tart, but it was still there. It was just prominent enough, and I thought it was a really nice balanced beer as well. Um, you know, kind of like bordering into that like funky farmhousey territory. Did you find the current was up to date? I did find the currents very up to date. Dark. Mm. <laughs> well, where's the button? Where's the cricket button? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know what? Oh, that was a joke. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> that's that's the button that gets that joke gets right, right there. <laughs> okay, I gave this one a four as well. Mm. Okay, so while we were drinking all these beers. I did notice a kind of theme um, going through this, and I was wondering if this is a trend now in Denver or beginning to be a trend, like with kettle sours and the fact that I could... I think it's a trend everywhere. Okay, so let's discuss. Yeah, you know, that's uh, definitely what, you know, was striking me is that this is, you know, going to be another, you know, kettle sour shop that is basically just going to be consumed by people that are making more traditional sours, you know, that are going to be aged in some wood of some kind, uh, be it a, a fooder or a barrel of any kind. Um, I just, uh, I just don't think that, uh, you know, we've had very few, you know, kettle sours that I really thought were emblematic of the quality of the style of the beers. Um, for all I know, I mean, we definitely had a couple that were aged in wood today. Um, you know, especially the one that was in the punching, um, you know, that Kendall mentioned. But all in all, I just, uh, I felt r- r- almost the same experience that we had, you know, out of the brew pub. I'm just kind of left with this giant question mark of going, I'm not really quite what, sure what you guys are tasting. Um, and it might have been, you know, some of the fact that, I mean, I am thinking about that day. I mean, uh, we spent, you know... I mean, easily, you know, we had had 600 beers, you know, that day. And we spent almost two hours of that day drinking sour beers exclusively at uh, our own event. And I think that that just kind of set the bar so high, maybe from a palate perspective, that, you know, maybe um, I would agree that there was maybe some palate fatigue by the time we got around to the brew pub. Mm -hmm. But still sitting here um with as many beers i know we've had you know even t- during today's production day i just i don't get it um so i think unless they really step up and start integrating and and actually creating true sour beer you know in some wood product um i don't know the half life you know on a lot of these i don't know man i i liked pretty much all, all these beers today and i think Kettle souring is, it definitely gives you a much more Mm one-dimensional sour characteristic than doing like a a true, uh, you know, mixed fermentation, um, you know, and and taking a long time. But I think, especially with small breweries, they have to be very careful about um, infections. Uh, And, you know, because if you're going to brew straight beers and do beers like this, you got to be really careful how you treat your equipment and when and how you sour. Um, having said that, I, you know, I don't know if maybe you need to put an asterisk next to a kettle soured beer and say, Hey, this one, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, a Brett Saison or, or it's a, it's a this or that, but it's kettle soured, you know, um, to me, all these were lighter beers. They were, 
not all session beers, but there were, you know, there was the one, um, I, I found all of them pretty enjoyable. Not, not if you're looking for, you know, a, you know, if you're, if you're trying to stack this against a Cantillon or a Trey Fontaine or something, it ain't going to happen, but for what they are and, and they're very approachable. We always talk about gateway beers and stuff. I think kettle sours are a good way to get people into souring and, get them into funky weird beers so i i i'm i'm a fan of what they're doing yeah and i think it has to do with price point i mean that with the kettling yeah. sour with the with that with the whole process itself that you're you can get it on the market it certainly is accessible to most people's budgets yeah but you know it does it does lack the nuance you know of a real you know carefully like that, carefully uh, managed sour it's beer so like that bud light lime marita i mean <laughs> Sure, you're not going to get the true lime taste, okay, but <laughs> if you want to get your Bud Light and the lime in a can, you've got to make some sacrifices. You know, one of the things, I think it's been mentioned, you said it, Dave, <laughs> is is the one-dimensional <laughs> st- side. Yeah. Um, and to me, this the tartness to these beers all taste the same. Yeah. And and that's a, it's a very similar thread throughout them. So it, it, it was really hard to distinguish it does limit you these beers in, in the they, variety. They you can did do. start running together. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, no. I You're mean, still I thinking can, about a lime marita? Uh, no, no, I'm not. I, I'm wondering how you even know about the lime marita. But I, oh, I should have that. No, but I do agree with you in the sense of I I enjoy and appreciate what they are trying to do. I mean, yeah. maybe they're limited. You know what I mean? Like they, I, there's a lot of beers that we have today. Um, I'm sure that they have more in their repertoire that we, you know, weren't able to get while we were there. And maybe for them to keep producing these beers and putting them out, maybe they have to. This is the only way they can get that sourness is by kettle souring. You know what I mean? Well, I'm thinking if, you know, if this was one of our if this was one of our brewer friends that we you know probably knew a lot better. Yeah, I think we'd pull them aside and go, yeah, I don't think so, man, you know. This may cut it for eight months or whatever to, you know, put something in a bottle and, you know, kind of get you to market. This is not a sustainable beer, you know, lineup. This is not going to have a five-year run. You know, there's just no way. There are too many people that could make this, you know, all day long. Okay. But then again, how long has True been in business? What, two years maybe? Yeah. No, uh, five Really? Yeah, almost five. Been around that long? Okay. Yeah. Wow. But, but I, I think we also have to have the caveat that we're all beer nerds. I mean, we're, all, you know, we drink a lot of advanced stuff that most people would, you know, turn their, turn away at mm-hmm. right off. And, and not everybody's going to enjoy a jaw clenching, you know, sour that's, you know, extremely complex. That's not what everybody wants. So, I think they found a market and they found the beers that they like. And I think that's what most breweries have to do these days is you brew a beer that you feel is good. You find other people who are like it and if people will pay you money for it. You stick with it. Yeah. The, you, you mentioned the gate, the gateway. Mm-hmm. This is the, has the, has the gateway effect. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I think it does have a niche, you know, yeah. to, to, uh, to help support, you know the more finely crafted. I mean the uh, neo projects. The neo pagans got to drink something. So, so if you had yeah. to pull Nick aside, what would you tell him? You know, what would be the next step for some of these beers? I think if they've got this bigger facility, I think they they move some of them beyond the uh, the kettle sour, you know, and do some some more complex. Uh, Mixed fermentation. I think buy a fooder and uh, invest yeah. in at least one or two barrel lines would be where I would tell them to go. You guys are all shaking your head. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really good. No. Yeah, fooder. Yeah. But as a gateway in a city that otherwise has all these like boutiquey type of sour beers around, I I think they're doing a great job. You know, agree. Up the irons, man. Okay, well. I think that was a really good episode. I hope you guys think so too, right? Maybe. You're not talking to us, are you? 
Well, I, I, was. Love the beer. I love the beer. I love, I love, I love the beer. <laughs> all right. We hope you enjoyed this episode, ladies and gents. And you can catch all of our episodes online, as well as on SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, YouTube, PRX, and Spreaker, our native media host iTunes and our own Android app are the easiest ways to enjoy the show on your phone. Just search for Sip Sud Smokes on iTunes or in the Google Play Store. Be sure to tap subscribe and the show will always be on your phone. We love your feedback. We love your feedback. And you can reach us online, 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 anytime at info <laughs> at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Da, 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 da. Our daily tasting notes <laughs> float on Twitter every day at Sip Sud Smoke. And our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands of other fans on those social media platforms. Do us a favor and take the time to rate this episode and Mike's heavy metal voice uh, if you're listening to us online. And do do not be gentle. Kendall, please tell us about your blog. My wife and I blog about the good news of good beer at BeerMakes3.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Good old boy, Dave. Rock on. Good old boy, Reverend Mark. <laughs> Blessings to you all. Good old boy, Mike. Come back. Join us again anytime on any episode. Hey, it's good old boy, Mike. <laughs> Definitely keep on sipping. Good old boy, Kendall. Just remember, I want to rock and roll all night and part of every day. <laughs> and part of every day? You I heard like me. that. Yes. Okay. Are you throwing up the Gene Simmons? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Well, this is good old gal Juliana. Thanks for joining us and keep on chuggling. This has been a One Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.